Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. So, this will be my second video that I'm doing today. I have been missing for a while and I am so thrilled that I have people missing me. I've been having people check up on me. I just answered another email just now and said, yes, I'm alive and well, and um, taking my slippers off right now. And um, it just got caught up in a lot of things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sharing life along the way, but um, I recorded an embroidery video earlier today, and it's still on my iPad and taking up space because I didn't want to upload it and then have the light gone. I really like using the natural light the very best, and so I'm going to try to take advantage of that. If this cuts off at the end and it's uploaded, that means that I'm not going to mess with it and I'm just going to let it be, but it may also cut off way too early. So life update. I've got this coffee cup in my hand and I've got to take a drink um, because I didn't want to take the time to have my coffee, which is usually like my whole experience. Like I have my coffee, which totally matches my shirt. I got this from my sister, Ginger. We met up and um, I got some more stuff from her. She's clearing out her house and she knows I love cast off things. So this is a real pottery mug and um, got several things, but I I didn't want it here. I'm going to take a drink. Mm. Usually my coffee is my, I don't do anything when I'm drinking my coffee that I don't want to do. So that's like my thing of just like my recess. So it's not like I don't want to do this, but it's hard to drink coffee and talk at the same time. So there we go. Now I'm going to show you different things along the way and then kind of catch you up with things along the way. Just so you know, I really do do stitching. Okay, so first off, here is an almost FFO. Yes, it is in the frame. I am happy with it, and it's been sitting out for several weeks. And I put this on my Instagram, but I had just kind of popped it in here, and just in case I didn't want it to stay in here for sure. And I am going to, it does actually fit perfectly right now. I can see that single line of stitching around the edge. And I did the called for um, size, but not the whole color. And the, all the information on this one is in um, my floss tube. You know what? I'll just cut and paste and I'll pop that in here because this was done on sand, which I really like. And I'm very happy with this. And I actually did find a, a frame that's not too expensive at Joann's and so I really liked that style and it worked out nice. Now I also have, um, so this is Beggar's Valentine, this is Beggar. I have Beggar's Christmas and something else. Oh, Beggar's Pumpkin or Harvest or whatever. I'm not going to redo this but I feel very like I'm trying to rush before the light comes in and screws it up. We're just going to calm down. I have the other beggar's pumpkin. So I'm hoping that they are all done on 32 and that they will all fit in this frame. So there you go. Um, that is beggar's Valentine. I am seeing February as finish it February. That's part of why it's been three weeks since I did a video. Taking another cup of coffee. Or another drink, but... Part of what I've been doing is trying to finish things and I, because I work, I think either I can talk about stitching or I can stitch. And so sometimes I just choose to stitch and sometimes I choose to talk about stitching. And sometimes I come home from work and when you're talking for hours with the mask on, you're talking louder. I'm sure you guys know this and it's exhausting. And so sometimes when I come home, it's like, I, I can't even talk. And um, so I just sit and stitch or sometimes just sit and watch stuff. So that's part of why I've been missing. So it's between finishing things up and then I really got into organization and I've got some, some neat stuff to share. But let's look at some more stitching since we're on the roll of finishing up. So this is, I'm sure I've shown this before. This, this is a needle book. I am on a huge needle book kick. 
I made this years ago and years ago I had a friend come over and we used my stuff and she made one too. So this is, I've got wool, this is woven. These are the little thingies that I'll share about. And so I, I was trying to find the pattern for this and as I was cleaning my room, I found it. It's called Needle Art, Folk Art Needle Case. It was in a magazine and I do this thing where I, I pull out stuff from magazines and then I pass them on because otherwise I wouldn't have enough room. This is December 2001 from American American Patchwork and Quilting. And and I love this one. To me, it's like the perfect size. It really works well for me. And, um, and I like that there's the wool because wool sharpens and cleans needles and it needles very easily. So it's not like um, something else that you have to kind of push that needle through. It just goes in like butter. So I was trying to figure out how I made this so I could remake it. And what I did, let me look through. I was going to show things in order, but since I pulled that one out, I have another finished based on that guy. And it's this, it's just smaller. So this is the finish that I had shown before freebie from stone street Stitchworks. It's the sweetheart. If I'm good, I'll put that all in the show notes, but those honestly, that takes forever to do all that. So I may decide I'll do that later. Um, so I should be good, but like, I need to take a walk. I need to pull weeds, all that kind of stuff. I just need to chill, have my last drink and do what I need to do here. So this guy is tiny, so you can see it's small, but I thought I want a variety and I like how this worked out. So I've got that. So this is Aztec red and it is an amazing, it's a ruby color. And I love it. This is Gentle Arts Oatmeal. And then this is my Valdani that goes around the edge. So I'll put in there what it is. There's no way I can read my notes on what it is. So this is just a variegated Valdani. And I have been learning some new things. So when I made this, I didn't have any um, uh, stabilizer or stiffener in there. And now I have learned um, S, let me... SP 101 is one that I've been learning works well. You iron it on both sides and it makes that way you can have a nice crisp fold and it gives it a little bit of stability without being the, the fusible fleece is too stiff for something like this. So I made this small and I loved this is so this is why I love the Valdani variegated because here you have dark stitching and then medium and then light and I, I just love it. These are the three different needles that I use more often. So in here, I wanted to share with you. Oh, I put that down lower. Why did I do that? I wanted to share with you some of the things, some of my favorite needles. And that um, these, these are why I like to have two little pockets in here. I don't generally keep scissors in here because I haven't made it where it cannot go through. I love these. So because I hand applique with needles that you can almost not see the hole, this works very good. This is called, see the lights coming in and that's where I feel like I need to talk fast. I'm just gonna talk slow. If it cuts off, it cuts off. And if I have to do more later, I will. Ultra fine threader. I got this at Peacemakers. I have a bag of them because if I was gonna pay for shipping, I wanted to get enough stuff. So ultra fine threader, I love those. Then I use for much of my stitching embroidery hand applique and hand quilting, I use these little thimble things. They go on the tip of your finger, it's sticky. And um, then after they get dirty, after your fingers are all oily, then you throw them away. And, but right now it sticks really good because it was brand new, but I find these like, I'll be stitching and I'll get up and I'll do something. And I'll find these stuck all over the house because before I've washed my hands or done something, I take it off. So they're always in assorted places. I use these a lot. And I, I ripped this case, but it's Colonial Needle, so Colonial. And what I do is this, so it comes with 12 of them. I cut it in half and then I put them in different needle books or different needle places. So that's one of my favorite. And then for my hand applique, this is an incredibly small eye and a small needle. So this may not work for everybody, but that's why I use that, the, 
the threader. This is hand applique. They're Sharps 12 from Peacemakers. Mom taught me with that. That's just what I've always used. Now I have my supply and her supply. So I have a lifetime supply of those needles. Then I've had questions on what size needle I use for my modified big stitch. And I, I have gotten this Peacemakers em, embroidery size five through 10 assorted needles. So I will, basically what I do is I use the size of the eye I need for the thread or the pearl cotton that I'm using, yet I use as thin of a needle as I can and as long as a needle as I can to load up as many stitches depending on what I'm stitching and what I'm stitching through. So that's where for me, the assortment works good. And then sometimes I will just use maybe the little tiny one either for embroidery or if I'm just doing the whip stitch or something. So those are just some of my favorite things that I use. But that was a fun freebie, but I am so glad that I found this Aztec Red. And I've seen Garnet, there's a Garnet. So Aztec Red is Weeks and I think Garnet is too. And it looks maybe just a little bit darker. Then this is my, so I've shared this before. This is the Chestnut Junction um, Love Poems book. And I, I've been sharing this a lot because I started out with it when I started doing my floss tube, but I gotta finish. I've got an FFO, fully, fully, fully finished. Okay, so in the embroidery floss tube that I just did, which this is 17, so that will be 16. I couldn't find this and I said, oh, I'll just share about it next. I had had questions about embroidery on did I use one thread or two. So this is what I'm going to share as a follow-up. I stitch generally with two threads and I even shared on there how I get it to lay fit, um, how I get it to lay, how I do my stem stitch. So I went into more details on the second embroidery video that I did. But at the time, and I do the stem stitch, so you can see it looks like a little bit of a rope. When I did this baby, it was so fine. Oh, and I hate when something doesn't look perfect. Let's show you this one. This one turned out better. When I do something very, very fine, um, it's hard. You have to take little tiny, basically one thread, and this is just fabric. One thread is kind of the stitch that I was taking. It was very tedious, but I used one thread and a very, very small needle, and that's, that's when I used one thread. Generally, I used two. I made this... I, this was inspired. So this is, this is from that pattern and I used um, a fusible to, I just simply fused it on here. It has loose edges and that's how it is on the pattern, but it's fused on here. I used the information from this book. This book has become my reference guide. I would really encourage you guys to get it if you're interested in making different things. Anila Hui's Stitched Sewing Organizers. I show it a lot because I use it a lot. And I really would like, I'm learning so many new techniques. I almost want to use it like a, 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 a learning book and make every project in here because I've not advanced to this one yet. So I'm advancing as I'm learning, but I used the ideas in that for making a needle book to make this. I just enlarged it. And then this was from, so I wanted it so I could have thicker things in here, yet it could still stay shut. So I learned how to do a tab how to do these snaps and they have these magnetic snaps that you can use. The only thing I didn't like is that it kind of is pulling up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, um, but you know, I want everything perfect and it's just not going to be perfect, but things won't fall out because I put that snap there. So I like that. This was, I think it was a fat, either a fat eighth or a fat 16th. That's how I made it this wide because that's how wide that piece of fabric was because I'm scrappy. So as I, I'm excited to show you because it's like part of me is in this because I used that idea, but I designed this particular thing. Oh, the funky lights coming um, as the sun goes down. So we'll see. Okay. So we open it up and we've got two pockets. Now I did this because I had fat, not fat quarters, um, layer cakes. So these were two layer cake pieces and that's how big I could make them. So I've got two pockets. Um, so this, these shapes, I just used that shape and that shape to cut those out. And 
Um, after I'm done, I think I want to just keep showing you some things and tell you once the light gets weird, um, I'll just tell you more about how I'm using wool much more often. I decided I wanted this big, beautiful piece of wool here as because I have a lot of wool that I haven't been using. I like how it matched, but also wool holds on to things just like flannel and felt does. So if I have something that I'm stitching and maybe I have a bunch of loose threads or something, I can simply lay them here as I'm working on it. I can lay it here. And then if I put it there, as I don't have anything loose. If I put it there and shut it, it, it grips it and it will hold on to it, especially because I have this tab. So that's where I thought, this is just fun. I had that big piece of, of wool that's been sitting there for at least a dozen years doing nothing. So why not use it? Then this was another um, piece from my layer cake. This was from a charm pack square. I have a lot of different fabrics, but small pieces of lots of different fabrics. So I just had to get creative. But you can see how wide this is a box of threads. And I wanted you to see, this is why I made this pocket like this, because I can put a hoop in here or I can put something big in here, yet it can all fit in here. So I have now so many different organizers that I'm making that I can choose my organizer based on what I'm doing. That just makes my little heart happy just because I've got a lot of fabric already and now I'm using it. But I wanted to share with you, this was something I had gone on a quilting time with some friends and there was a vendor there and I bought a lot of different R fill threads. And I bought this one and I hadn't used it in a year, but these are wool threads. So they are wool, I'm reading it upside down, 10 spools of 12 weight thread. So you can see this is Timeworks Toolbox Designs this is wool and it's 12 weight. So I could do cross stitch with these. Um, and so I had never used them before. So I wanted to try to use that. And so this is the white one. So this is the first time that I had used wool thread and I found out some things about it. It's very thin and delicate. So I would not use it for hand quilting. That's not the purpose anyway. When I bought it, the gentleman who was selling it said this would be great for your wool applique project. So I bought it. So it is not good for some, but good for others because it is, let's see if I can pull out this one that I used and you can see because it has the wool, it's a little bit, um, I don't know there. You can kind of see it glistening off of the sun. It has some fibers there that you can see. So some fibers are sticking up. It's very interesting, but it wasn't incredibly strong. And so I felt it was kind of delicate. So we'll see how I use that. But I just wanted to share with you because I know a lot of you are addicted to collecting threads too. And then I could show you how I could stick something thick in there. Yet it can also go thin. So I am very excited that that is done. And I really wanted to encourage people because I have a large fabric collection. I have purchased it, but I have also inherited a lot of fabric from both my mom and my sister has shared some with me. So I have a lot of fabric, but you don't have to have big pieces of fabric. This was just a couple dollars for one, this strip, this size. So a lot of good places that you can get fabrics. Okay. What else can we share now? I am, I'm just ending up with everything on the floor. All right. This is another FFO. There's the lights coming. Okay, so this one, I'm done. So this is um, Folk Bird, Folk, Folk Bird Needle Book by Not Forgotten Farm. It's a finish, um, and you can see, see, look at, I loved it. I think that's part of why I bought this because I liked that it was folk art. I've shared about the wild colors of thread in other videos, but I loved the tabs. And I loved how this turned out. And here's something I didn't pay attention to. I didn't read the directions. So when I started stitching this, I should have left a big piece so that it could fold here. However, it was supposed to fold. I didn't lay it out right in, as I did my stitching. I thought, oh, I'm not going to restitch it. What am I going to do? Well, then again, this guy I use a lot and it opens up. So I thought, well, bingo, that's what we do. We do what we can. We open it up. And so I love these. 
Um, the wool, I've got wool in here. I will use wool whenever I can and just one pocket in here, but I love it because I had chosen this piece of fabric because it did look like a bird's nest. And what do we have in here? Of course, because I use these everywhere, those are in there. So there we go. I'm very excited about that finish. Um, so I changed the eye. The eye was really the only thing I changed both because I made a mistake and I didn't, it had a yellow eye and I did the yellow eye and I thought, no, I know Robins have that weird white thing around their eye. And so I just did like an off white and then a black. I just kept doing these. I, maybe it's called the eyelet stitch. I just kept doing different asterisk things until it came out that way. So very thrilled with that, that that's done. Oh, and I, I, I have been finishing a lot lately. So here is another, it, I think it's an FFO because I keep thinking it needs something else. But in this book, there is um, the two in one case and this is what it is. I just made it bigger because I changed the sizes of everything, but I made the mistake because I cut this out long ago. Well, maybe a month or two ago. I should have made it one inch wider um, because I wanted it to match this, but you will see it's one inch too narrow, or will you see that? Yeah, it's one inch too narrow. So that was, I thought, oh, that was a, that was a bummer. So this has a tab. This was the, this was how I learned how to do the tab. That's why I'm learning so much. And I learned it is pretty much a pain because you're stitching over this thing and that, that was not perfect stitching, but it, it was not easy, but I learned how, I learned how to do a tab. I'm learning a lot. Then open it up and look at, I've got two sides here. So that's going to be the fun thing. And each one is zippered. I was just waiting until I made a new order on zippers. So instead of getting the 14 inch zippers, now I'm getting the 18 inch. So, cause I really don't like working around the pull. Now, after I put this together, I thought, that's boring fabric. I mean, it's nice. It actually looks prettier on what I'm seeing in the video than in real life. But I was, I was disappointed after I made this. And I thought, oh, I want it to be a little more exciting. And so I pulled out more fabrics. And then I, I <laughs> this is what I came up with. I came up with this. I was going to add this as a pocket and have it where you can slide stuff in because really it sits like this in my in my basket it sits like this so i was going to have this as a pocket and now i'm looking at it and i think oh that would be cute but that as i did it i thought no i don't like that you know it's that's the mood i'm in a lot of times i'm coming home from work doing this stuff so i may actually do that but i was thinking there's not enough green to tie everything in uh you know what sometimes i just overthink things but we'll decide. It's like I'm standing here trying to decide what I'm going to do. So what I was going to do is do a line of stitching. Oh, that's the other thing. I was going to have to hand stitch it because this thing is already put together and then I was going to have to stitch it up. That's probably why I just decided let's just make a whole nother one an inch wider and make one that I can do this as I do it. So that's my finish. If I have time, I'm going to share with you what's inside of it, but it's not, it's not started. So I'll put that back in the stack and let me tell you about this. So this was where I had a finish before, but I had made a mistake when I was doing, see, I've got my lovely project bag. When I was doing, um, from the heart, Wendy Petros's pattern, let me open it all the way. That's, I don't like the, I need to get real shades here so the the sun doesn't come through as a blind there but that's life um okay so camelot's rose needle book i can't wait to get back to this and i need to that's where that's why i keep thinking either i can stitch or i can talk about stitching um but i had started this project on not the called for which was cordy's special blend and i had done two of those side panels which is part of the pattern that's like the pocket yeah that's the pocket didn't then when I went to do this, I have dried roses, the silk and, and it wasn't showing up. So I thought, okay, I'll get the called for and I have everything. I just need to, to do it. I have all the stuff in here and I just need to do it. Um, and I have not done it yet, but I thought, oh, those are so pretty pieces. I will do something with it. So I think I will probably just make a new one with fabrics that that please me that please me to do that 
So that's why it's like a finish, sort of finish. It's this, the, the two in one is an FFO as long as I can make it. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you, what I learned from here on how to put zippers in and how to do a flange for your zippers and how to do a tab. Now, when I was nervous about doing zippers for the first time, my bud, Celeste, did a, a zipper project bag video. If you don't know how to do zippers, you watch it, you'll do it, you'll know how to do it. So since Celeste was showing me how to do it, gave me the courage, where's my bag? I don't know. That's where I keep all my floss tube stuff on all the things that I'm gonna talk about. I keep it in that bag, so it's somewhere. But I learned how to do that, gave me the skills, and then I was able to keep moving forward. So from that video, I have now learned how to do a flange, which is just another piece of fabric that kind of goes over and hides the zipper and keeps it there. Um, and I've, I've learned a lot of fun things. So this is an FFO, but now, but I had six placemats. So this is only two of those placemats. So is, I'm thinking, is it really an FFO? It's an FFO for these two placemats. They are fully finished. So, oh, there we go. If I go backwards, that will work. So this was a fun project. I will not do a tutorial because I can barely like get these up and going, but it was really cool to use a placemat to make a project bag. So it is a bigger project bag, whereas here is my normal project bag. So it is a much bigger, so it doesn't fit in my neat and tidy little basket. It actually has to sit behind it but it's great for big things. So let's just show you what I have in it and then I will show you more about it. But I had shared about this light box. I'm keeping it in this thing because I don't know if the front gets scratched. I got this light box, look at that. Um, and I got it on Amazon. I will put the link in my other video, which will be the embroidery one, Floss Tube 16. Um, it was about 20 or $25. It's USB, um, which I have a USB light. I have a USB light. I have a light that has a USB cord on it and it's an alt light. Um, but because it has this cord, I'm not sure if it's gonna scratch and that's gonna all stay in this case. On Instagram, I'm talking fast again. On Instagram, I had shared my steps and I was learning things every few minutes. So I put three posts on all about this project. So I was happy that it turned out so well. And I had shared before that these placemats I had made many, many years ago. I still need to find what this pattern is, but it was paper piecing. I had used them last year. I was going to use this just as a finishing up my, we call it UFOs, unfinished objects. There were placemats and I thought, well, I'll just practice my machine quilting and then I'll make them as placemats because I like placemats firmer. So I don't like, if, if I have a machine quilting done on a quilt, I don't like a lot of quilting because it makes the, the quilt stiffer. So on placemats, the stiffness is great. So these were, these were pretty heavily quilted because I was practicing. I was practicing, practicing, practicing curves. Then I had the, this I did not enjoy. This I hated. I hate stippling. My brain, it doesn't work with my brain. This I loved. So it was just kind of like drawing, doodling, and I was really having fun. And I liked how they turned out. So then I used um, the binding that I had. But the trick with, because I was using what I already had, now if I was to do this again, I would cut out wider binding but this was the binding that I had because it was just supposed to go over, these are my other placemats, it was just supposed to go over one width. So that would have been just fine over one width, not too big of a binding. But this of course was two, so it had to bind two together. So it was kind of, I had to kind of work with it, make a very narrow seam to make it work. The other thing I shared on Instagram was as I was wrapping this up, I use, I cut out the binding at the time I finish the project. So that way I don't use, because I, it can be years before I actually finish it. When I finish the quilt top or a project like this, I choose the binding, I cut it, I prep it, I get it ready and I store it because I could end up forgetting and use that fabric for something else. So I just use my salvages and this is how I, I don't usually have zippers. 
I, this is usually how I do it. I have salvage, I have it in a drawer, but as I was wrapping this back up, I showed this on Instagram. It was from um, Bonnie Blue Fabrics. So it's funny. Oh, now I folded it different. Oh, there we go. So it says, of Bonnie quilts. It was really cute how I had it on the Instagram picture, but it says, of Bonnie quilts. Um, so that was just cute. It was just a fun thing. One thing I learned as I put this together, which I thought it was going to be a quick project. No, this, this, because I didn't have a book telling me what to do, I knew how to do the flange. I knew how to do the little tabs at the end here, which really helped because the zipper would not have been long enough. So the tabs... So I didn't have to get a separate zipper. The tabs made it fit. Um, I really had to think because the zipper, I did not want to top stitch because there, there was not really room to top stitch to make the zipper, um, to make the inside of the zipper stay down. So I had to figure out how to make that inside zipper stay down without stitching it. And I thought, okay, so I've got my hand applique glue, my Roxanne fabric glue. And so what I did was I used the fabric glue and my fingernail to get it down, but I used a ton of these clips. And these are great, the mini wonder clips, but next time, but I learned they, see, I don't know that you can see it, but they left little teeth marks. There's, there's little dents there, look like dimples. There's little teeth marks because I used, I used a lot of them and I did not Put anything there to cushion it so since I decided I I I don't use placemats really and I have enough so I would rather have more fun project bags so I am going to use a strip of batting or rolled up fabric as a cushion so it doesn't matter you know it's not gonna matter a bit on this side but on this side I will use a cushion so those clips you only leave it there for a couple hours but the fabric glue has to dry but what was really cool was that there is already a lining in there and then the edges that's hidden by the seam. So it, it was a pretty cool project and there are probably videos out there that show you how to do it. And I probably could have watched those, but again, I'll get sucked into the YouTube vortex and hours later, um, I will see, I will see, I'm, what I'm seeing is my husband driving away to work. We don't get much time spent together. You, you know he supports me in these videos. And I said, I got to do this video before I lose the light. So instead of me sitting and visiting with him before he goes off to work, um, because I'm usually, my work schedule, we've been separated because of our work schedules. He supported me and he said, go do your video. Um, so I just saw him driving away to work. Okay. On to what else? Okay, so here in front of me, I'm trying to stay focused, but I want to show you as much as I can before the light gets funky and then I can just talk to you guys. So some more things that I learned and finished. I had been wanting to do a Valentine project bag. Um, not necessarily Valentine fabric, but just Valentine-y feel. So I had, because I have small pieces of fabric, I had enough for that and I love it, but I didn't have enough to do red here you're supposed to have um where's my other one it's supposed to be like this where you have those two matching pieces so i made this as wide as i could and i thought oh not a big deal because this would match this even though this even has a seam down there i had just enough my sister had given me this fabric and i've done i used most of it in my valentine's quilt which i will be showing eventually um but this was the only bit of this is the piece i had and i thought oh i can make it work so I made it work and I did this and I thought, well, that looks fine. It looks fine when it's like that, but I learned it looks really weird to me. Let me put something back in it. It looks really weird. Oh, here we go. Here's what was in there. It looks really weird when you put the project in and then it's got that and it's like, what's up with that? So I don't know. Again, it doesn't look that bad when I'm showing you here, but I was just disappointed in it. So I thought, well, it's a lesson learned. If I don't have enough, I'll figure something out, but I didn't have enough red to match and I, it is what it is, but it is just not exactly the way I wanted it to turn out. So I'm, I'm getting too hung up on trying to get things perfect. So 
this this was the one that I was using for most of my stuff because I love this fabric and it is red but this is the project that I have it's almost an FFO but I was too tired last night to fully finish it so Valentine Cupboard Pillow Tuck from Country Rustic Primitives it's an instant download I love I love that company they're Etsy and I like I like all the stuff because it's primitive I used Christie's demo for coffee dyeing, Daisy K's primitives. I'm thinking, hang on, I'm dying for a drink of a drink of something not coffee right now. Oh, that's better. Um, because remember, I already did an hour long video. Oh, I don't know if I told you. I think I did. See, this is why I talk too much and I forget what I said. I already did. I I told you already. Golly. This is why I shouldn't do one, one video a day, but I've already done an hour long video and my, my talking voice is, I'm losing it. Look at this. Or can you see it? Yeah, there you can. Does that not look cool? Okay. For those of you that love primitive, it looks cool. So this is Daisy Case Primitives, um, coffee dyeing video. My phone was just going off on vibrate and then it fell in my basket. Okay, so look at how that, look at how that turned out. Can you see it? Darn the light. There we go. It looks, it looks primitive. And then I was thinking, dang, I don't even want to make it into a pillow because I would hide that edge, but I'm going to. But you will Steve, still see that. But isn't that cool? And this is because I cut it out the size that I want the pillow before I coffee dyed it. And so all that dye kind of went to the edge and I thought, oh my gosh, that's super cool. So I did, I did one dip in the coffee dye and I, I put it in the oven for, for the, you know, Daisy, Daisy, Christy has the video. So go check it out. I'll link that one. Um, I am not going to push stop. Come on, girl. What was I going to say? Oh, and then I almost left it at that, that saturation of color because it turned out really pretty. And then I thought, no, let's see what it turns out after a second dip. So this was two dips, but it is neat because that the coffee does kind of go to the end. And then I didn't even want to bother coming back in my room to get the little brush to kind of do it a little bit more. So I just dipped my finger and I just ran a little bit extra coffee around the edge. So, um, so that's, that's how that turned out. The other funny thing, because I've got scraps, this, I wanted this piece of fabric um, for it. And it was just, oh, that, I just had a little tiny strip because it's a scrap. And um, so it's just a little bit too small. What's going on with my phone? Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so I wanted to use this fabric and it's just a little bit too narrow, but I will make it work. But that's how I am as a scrappy stitcher and quilter. All right. Now to show you, I had been doing 32 count Zweigart as Christy recommends that you can get it at Hobby Lobby with the coupon, but I wanted to see what 36 would be like. So I had purchased this on one, two, three stitch. It's the 36 count white Edinburgh. Um, and, and it's, so it turned out just a little bit smaller and I have a nice big piece, very inexpensive. So I can play around with that, but that's the fun thing of using the white to do the coffee dyeing or tea dyeing. What else can I share with you? I have another FFO, but this gives me a lot of guilt at the moment. So I really been enjoying this fabric and I wanted to make something. I was, I made this for me. So I made a needle book, but I am not happy with the edges. It was probably late at night. This one's bigger than that. It is just not perfect. And that side, it wasn't perfect either. And I thought, why do I even need to do the curved edges? Again, I keep going back to this. This didn't have curved edges. They just kind of turn out a little bit of curve as you do it. And I thought, all right, so we're just going to do it different next time. And I had um, charm squares, so five inch squares of lots of different fabric from this line. So I'm just using up my charm squares. So I just chose my favorites. I have a lot of wool and I will share with you at the end because the light's getting funky on how I can use all my wool right now. So this was just a little needle book and I haven't been using them really because I've had them stacked here waiting to talk to you. 
Okay, so this was the guilt. This is where the guilt came in. So I have two more that I need to make and I have them as gifts for two special people. But I just didn't get to them. There's Selfish Bonnie. I made one for me, but probably because I was like, I don't like how those edges turned out. So I just let them languish for two weeks. And they will know who they are after I get done with this and, and they're going to be sent in the mail to them. But there's somebody that I was watching and on one of her floss tube videos, she was making cappuccino or she was using one of these. And I thought, what is that? I don't even know what that was. It is. It's a cappuccino maker. So I thought, oh, I got to make one of these for her um, and send it to her. So because I have something else that she won that is still sitting in my house. So. Rocio, if you're watching, you're going to be getting this. So anyway, it's been languishing, but there, that's the piece that's going to go there. There's some wool and there's a piece there. But just like with that other needle book that I made, I had certain sizes of fabrics and I had to make that thing work. So I didn't realize as I cut out, because I had cut out um, three of this with the curved edges and then the five it wasn't big enough and so I had to trim it down from there it ended up turning into a little more complicated thing than I had expected um, but I just trimmed them down a little bit and they will be they will be two more getting done and off to their recipient soon so I've been feeling guilty about that so I need to finish those and so I can stop feeling guilty okay now Another thing that I was working on, I was working on a hoop and most of the fabric, most of the linens that I work on are variegated or, you know, is that called variegated? Help me out guys. Call it out. Call it out. What is that called? Anyway, you know, where it looks, it's hand dyed. So if your hands are dirty, it doesn't really show up, but I did something that it showed up and because I use a lot of lotions, I can't stand, I will not stitch with dry hands it freaks me out like people that do the chalk on the nail board mm -hmm. chalkboard everything is making noises I'm getting these notifications the lights going on and my phone is going crazy so I am very distracted and that really was decaf there okay I can do this okay I will not stitch with dry hands I won't touch fabric or paper with dry hands so I have lotions and I have the things that even that I make with oils that um, will leave a mark on fabric but most like this it wouldn't really show up so I don't know if you can even see this so two things that I will show with you so hopefully this is not the first video of mine that I know I've said this before though I am pretty distractible and I am kind of an airhead um, but if this is my first floss tube that you're seeing I'm not always so distractible like this this is my friends of the heart progress i actually got one of those where there we go i actually got one of those pomegranates almost done i'm just missing one of the the threads and i'll just choose from my thing um from my stash but um i got progress made on that but look at i i found i know that they have grime guards for q snaps and i thought could i use that so i just searched embroidery hoop Grime guard, and I got one. I got one. So, um, this is here's the card that I purchased this from. It was Etsy. I think it was like seven ninety nine. Where? Oh, where? There you go. And I'll link it as well. But that's where I got. It was seven ninety nine for the six to eight inch hoop skirt. Oh, that's what it was called, hoop skirt. Um, and it came packaged so cute, even with this little right here with this button. I thought it was cute. I was going to show it to you when it was on here, but twice I have tried to do these videos and once I left it on there all day with my project in the hoop. So I just thought I'm not doing that anymore. So I'll just show you. It does work really good. Then the other thing that's neat is that all that excess fabric, I know any of you who have used the Q-snaps, which I have not used yet, even though I have one, know that you can put excess fabric back there. I had thought that I would use these. So I've seen people use these thread huggers. I thought I would like that, but it, it added a weight and a thickness and it didn't catch enough of the fabric. Well, this works really well, yet I can keep the fabric in there and even in a six inch hoop, I'm, I'm not getting it in my way of stitching. So I was very happy with that, very happy. And it wasn't bright, it wasn't a bright one. So I like that. This is the project. 
Kim, the Contented Stitcher, and I are doing a stitch along, and I have not even checked on it, and I'm sorry. Um, but this is Friends of the Heart by Plum Street Samplers. We are calling ours Our Friends of the Heart SAL. I will check on that on Instagram. But like Instagram has turned off. Don't get me going on social media right now. All right. Um, what else can I share? Because I'm 45 minutes into this and I'm thinking I should really just stop the video and start over another time. Not going to happen because I just won't get it done for another week. Um, okay. Here is my little stack. This was my, my bag that I made from Celeste video and this is all the stuff this is where like I have my notebook of things that I want to cover and then I have all the notes because then I will take this in and then I'll type up type up all the show notes but now I have this where when I find things that I want to share with you I stick it in this little bag so that works so that's my Celeste bag then I don't want to throw that on the floor this is another work in progress that I have going so this is my bag this was the um, fat quarter bundle that I got. It's called Home by Kathy Schmitz. And I had made the project bag with one of the panels. And I had shared about that already. And you can't see it too well now. But this, and I tested yesterday or the other day when I tried a Friday. I can't put the blind down. It just makes even more weirdness go on. So we're just going to work with this. So this is my, let's see if I can make it go close and you still see it. There we go. You can kind of see it. So I love um, French knots. This is crosshatch. And I'm using um, the hand-dyed lace and hand-dyed twill tape. And this is just a fun project that I've got going. And that's going to be the backing. So I'm hoping to have this finished soon. I even have the chenille for the edge. Let me show you the pattern. And then I wanted to tell you what I'm learning about this. So now I've got my colored pattern. And it's Let It Be. This is an instant download from Kathy Schmidt's um, Etsy site. I've She suggested, I've used a lot of different fusible backings when I'm doing my applique. This is the first time I've used this. This one's called Soft Fuse Pre Premium. It's paper-backed fusible web for machine or hand applique. It is a, I wonder if I turn, if it's going to be... Uh, there we go. Um, oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Um, this is very light. There's the sun anyway. It's very light, very thin, and I've been using that. Where do I look now? Oh, there you are. There you are. Um, so I'm liking it. It's thinner. I used to use Steam Seam, Steam Seam Light. This is very, very thin. And I will share more about the pros and cons of it when I show my um, Valentine quilt video, whenever I get that done. I'm, I'm not going to be able to get it done today because I've talked a lot. All right. That's all. I wanted to show you some stuff that I had kitted up. Um, we're going to save that for another day. Um, so we're, ju we're just going to save that for another day, the next video. And I'm going to share with you some stuff, um, some fun stuff. Okay. So Christy, Daisy Case Primitives, this is for you. On Christy's um, Instagram, she had shared something that was a Raggedy Ann doll. And I said, I'm going to share with you my Raggedy Ann doll on my video. So this is Raggedy. This is Raggedy. She, this is like real prim stuff. I did not do that. It is like real prim. Poor thing. She probably had coffee spilled on her. Um, I was FaceTiming with my dad and I said, don't let this scare you. Cause my kids used to say, mom, that's, that's creepy. That's going to scare my friends. So she's a creepy little doll. Anyway, she's beautiful to me because I think this was mom. So I asked dad when I was FaceTiming him, I said, dad, was this mom's? And he looks at it and I said, I know she's kind of creepy. Um, but he said, I don't know. He said, Something like, I should have kept a notebook on all mom's stuff. And so we were just joking around. So I think this was mom's because it, it is very old. And I don't think I would have kept it if it had not been had a special meaning to it. But poor Raggedy. She's had a rough life. Um, but she is still loved. Even though she needs the new hairdo kind of a thing. So Christy, there you go. That's for you. 
and then um if I cry, I cry. Okay, so that's the all that I'm going to show you of my cross stitching. There's other stuff laid out here, but we'll do that another time. If I cry, I cry. It's just going to happen. Maybe. Um, I had an overwhelming shower of love this week from my stitching family. I have had people checking on me to see if I'm okay because... Um, it's been three weeks since my video and people have just told me they love my videos. They're worth the wait. Um, and I appreciate that so much. I never, never expected when I started doing these, I, like a lot of, a lot of other floss tubers thought there would just be a few of my friends watching them. But, um, thank you. Thank you for those that watch me, whether it's just to see the stitching or who stay all the way to the end and hear what I call the good stuff, which is my my faith and faith in action. And it, it's been in action this week, so I'll share about that too. But I've also had cards. I've had gifts. I, I've been worried about sharing this because this is what happens whenever I think about these things that I am loved so much that I got these. So this is tears, like I say. I do these as if you were here with me. This is my nervous habit if you haven't figured it out. I do these as if you were visiting with me. And if you were visiting with me, I'd be crying. So thank you guys. Um, I get so many amazing comments and support and love and people sharing their Bible verses and things that encourage them or things that they have seen in me and they share their stories with me. And it means so much to me, even though I'm not quick to respond. Sometimes I read them and I can't respond right there because I have to go to work and I can't get teary. So here we go. Um, this is not in order of first to last. I'm just sharing them. I'm going to share them how I opened the boxes. Um, so this is from This is from Christy, Daisy K's Primitives, um, sent me this beautiful kitten stitcher card with beautiful words. Words of affirmation is my highest love language. She designed this for me. Um, she sells, she does sell finished things on her Etsy site, but this one was done just for me. And this is me. So I had done in my last, in a floss tube, I'm in a Renaissance costume. And I had the most fun doing that video than any other videos because it was so fun to wear a costume. And my son, Chad, said, you need to wear more costumes because you had more, so much more fun doing it. But I don't think I have any more costumes. But this is me in costume. Um, oh, goodness. Goodness. We're just going to turn you. You're going to see my messy room. I don't care. You're going to see this. Okay, there you go. So, um, keep turning you. Hey, there is mom. Okay, so she designed this for me. So my words for the year were trust and obey. So she charted this out for me. And then from a book that I'll share with you in a minute, um, that was another gift from the Ultimate Sampler Motifs source book. There was a lady. And so she made this as me. So this is me in my costume. And then this is Riley. That was also from the motif book. Isn't that so cool where the needle's there? This is our log cabin, and this is this year, but these are my words for this year. So that she would take the time and stitch this for me, that she would make this for me and send it to me with a beautiful card. Just, she said she knew I would flip. I did, I flipped. That was just so awesome. And then I was showing Riley, and I said, Riley, Riley's my dog. I said, look at this, that's you. And he sniffed it because she has a cat. He sniffed it and then he licked. I was, I knew he wasn't going to get the needle. Um, he licked him. <laughs> it was so cool. So thank you, my Christy. Um, then, see, I'm doing it now without crying. Then I got a beautiful thank you card from Sarah. A thank you card because she won something and she knows I love gardening. So Sarah, thank you. Sarah's also been checking on me to make sure I'm okay. And then... Here we have um, Carol of the Rosebud Stitcher. Oh, she had some neat finishes. Um, neat finishes. So check out the Rosebud Stitcher. And um, she had a pillow. I've not seen it before. It's a flanged pillow. 
um, that she had as a finish, and then she had Coming to America as an FFO on her, not the last one, but the one before. She sent me these heart floss tags, and I've never had this. This is the coated wire rings, and they're, they're soft, and they're nice. They're wonderful. Then she sent me beautiful springy colors. So this is, oh, Plymouth Rock, and the color is not going to show. It kind of matches my shirt. It's like a gray blue variegated. It's gorgeous. And then look at, because these, these two would go together. Um, beautiful corally pink. So beautiful springtime colors. So that was from Carol and stickers. So I'm going to show you what I did with the stickers. So I love these moleskin books. So I already have one of them on there. And then look, I use these for all types of things. These are just notes of things that I need to buy. A little sticker there so thank you Carol and then um, stickers so fun stickers um, that I get to use for different things and a beautiful card so many people um, it was funny because as I and my husband was leaving for work when packages arrived and then the, the other card in the mail from Sarah and I said, oh my gosh, Kurt, I got something more. And he was just so happy for me because he knows this is like my love language. And I said, you know what? They're connecting with me because I share Jesus. I said, it's not just my stitching. It's that I share my faith. And then I said, because he was getting in the car and he knows me. Um, he was getting in the car. He has this, my old cast off car. Well, I have the beautiful new car. He was getting in his car. And I said, oh, and I like to have fun. And he started laughing and he got in his car and I said, oh, and I'm a rock star. And he just started laughing and he took off for work. Um, that's how I caught him. I made him laugh when, when I was 15. Okay. Myra. Myra sent me this. It was so sweet because I got an email and she said, I thought of you when I got something and I got something for thee and something for me to keep us busy until the Lord returns. I, I've seen a lot of people share this book, but nobody can really share the inside of it because it's all the charts. And I thought, I don't know what's in there, so I'll just wait until I see it to buy it. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. Tons and tons and tons of motifs. And I, I really, when I see people show their samplers, the borders are like, to me, like, I love looking at the borders. And sometimes I would see a sampler and I might not like the inside, but I love the border. Well, there's some of those borders or similar in here. So Myra, unbelievable. This is really, really a neat book and it's available now. Then she sent me a sampler collection of, I was going to say acorn thread, threads, um, anchor. It's, you can tell how tired I'm getting. These are, they're showing up brighter right now because of the sun than they really are. These are really the muted these are muted and like my my kind of color. Myra, you're my kind of girl. These are my colors. So they are anchor threads. And the, the neat thing, so always to go back to teaching, when you do the coffee dyeing, you have to use color fast threads. DMC, anchor, there's probably other ones, sulky. But they have to be color fast. No over dyes or they'll bleed. So these are awesome. And this red, this will be on my next Valentine one because that red is is deep and rich and lovely. So Myra and then doo -doo 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 -doo. so this was sitting on my chair for a while and I, I sent Myra an email and I said, they're calling to me. They're calling to me. Look at this. This is Not Forgotten Farm. Lori and her husband, Peter, have designed, she designed it, I think, and he made it. But these are, this is I'll put the name. I forgot what it's called. I think it's called the chair tray. These, look at, I'm holding it with my chin. This sits, so it can sit on a wide, narrow, whatever. It is a tray that goes on the side of your couch or chair, and it holds your stuff. And look at, she added, it It must have come with a needle minder, but then she added another one. So I think she added this one, um, but they're just needle minders. And um, so she said she wanted to get me one that was prim, so there's sanded edges, and a robin's egg blue. And I said, oh my gosh, I just did the needle book with a robin's egg in it. So Myra, um, so this is how it was sitting on my chair with these threads on there and just, just taunting me when I was working to come and sit down and stitch. So there you go, I only cried a little bit. Um, 
but just I just felt an outpouring of love just amazing and I thank you and that's what keeps me going because in the midst of our crazy life I'm working and I will get everything planned out and it was so funny because yesterday morning I had everything set out and honestly I was ready to push play and I get a because I work on call I got a call to go into work and I could have turned it down but no work no money um and I had just found some Ren fabric and I ordered some. Where was it from? Needle case goodies, I think. But I'm sorry, I bought all that they had. I bought three pieces that were left. So I thought, well, I spent money. I need to go and earn money. So I did it. But then, of course, my videos are delayed until we get the sun coming in here. But you kind of get to see mom. Um, so there we go. Um, oh, let me share you one. Let me share you. Since I got an okay light now, and let's get these things done so they're off my table. Um, Lori, Mr. Stitches, did a finishing, she FFO'd, so she fully finished, she put Cooper, her cross-stitch project, in a frame, and it was so fun watching. I am a visual learner, uh, so instead of reading directions, they kind of just go, they go right over my head. When I watch someone do something, it really, really helps. She used something I had never seen before. This was waiting for me when I got home from work yesterday. Um, stitchery tape. I searched it, found it. And got it. Um, so it is like it's double sided tape for mounting stitchery, and you could put it on and remove it. So now, my beggar's night, after I watched her do it, now I am going to fully finish my beggar's, not beggar's night, beggar's Valentine, now that I have this. So thank you, Lori, for sharing that. And she has done other videos too that really helped me. Then here's something. So I've been getting a lot of stuff from my sister. Her name is Ginger, but I call her Ging. Um, and everybody calls me Bon in my family, um, or Beej or BJ or Beanie Bonjour, all kinds of names. But these were things that I had, she had offered me from mom. And I am finding, like I was using this for an Oort catcher and it sits on the back of my sewing machine I mean, not the back of it. It sits on the table right behind it while I'm stitching because that's that's where it lives. Because it's so delicate, it stays in my room. But then I was thinking, okay, so I ended up getting more clips, which is good because I needed them all the other day. And so what I had them in didn't fit anymore. So I thought, oh, this will work out good. Then the other thing is, like, when I take a project over to my sewing machine, I didn't have anything to Put them in and so now it's so cool because this is usually at the back side of my sewing machine so I can just reach over grab it if there's threads I dump them out I don't save my threads yet um, and then as I'm using my clips they end up it sits it fits right in front of my sewing machine and then I come over to my thing and I dump them in there so you know it it's been fun and I love using mom's stuff but that's also what I wanted to share with what I've been up to lately. So a lot of people have been sharing that they've been organizing. I know Christy Daisy Kay's Primitives has been sharing that. Then Lisa, Lisa Abbey's Needlework was sharing. Um, a lot of people are organizing right now because Christmas is going away. The house looks empty. So because I take a lot of my stuff down for Christmas, it just makes sense to clean and organize before things come back up. So I got on this, this, um, kick I want to say I got on a kick so not just a needle case kick but I got on an organizational kick and there's some cool things that happened so one of them was I was taking a walk on Super Bowl Sunday and it was evening and I got home just right probably the game was playing which to me it doesn't matter I'm not a I bought I've got a pizza that day though um but I was walking home and I was walking right by someone's people leave stuff out on the curb I'm sure they do that everywhere and I usually just walk by because we don't really have any, I, I've got stuff crammed everywhere, so I don't really have anything, any room extra. And I saw this office furniture and I thought, oh my gosh. And I'm always wondering, like, are people watching me as I walk by and do I want to look at it? It's like, whatever. So I stopped, I turned around, went back, and it was amazing. It, it was a big piece of furniture and a smaller filing cabinet. And then I opened it and I thought, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. And so I brought my car back because it was only a couple blocks away. And I thought, okay, Kurt's off working. My neighbor who has a truck is probably at a Super Bowl game. Nobody was home. And I thought, surely I can do this. I lifted weights a month ago. Um, 
And so I parked, I have a, an Outback Subaru, so I backed it up and I thought, surely I can get this in there. Oh my gosh, no. It was so incredibly heavy and there was no way I could get it. So I thought, I'm just going to let it go. Um, if it's there tomorrow, so my husband's working nights, sleeping days. So I thought, oh, I got to wait till he wakes up. And then is he going to have time? And I thought, okay, Lord, if you want me to have it, it will be there when he wakes up, if he has time. It was there. He woke up. He had time. And my neighbor, who um, we realized it was so heavy, it would have hurt Kurt and me to do it. So when my neighbor got home, it perfect timing. It was God's gift. We got that. Both guys almost got a hernia. And then... Uh, Paula and I are watching the guys like, oh, be careful. It was so high quality, but it was so heavy. But I got it. No. <coughs> but I got it. And um, then we finally got it into the house. And I've been organizing my office, which has gotten quite messy. And so all I wanted to do was be in here in my sewing room because my sewing room is pretty much organized. And so it, I spent eight hours straight filling and I still have more space and I still need to finish. So that's, that's taken up a lot of time. And that was a great gift. Um, it was a great gift for me to get both for my neighbor and husband to help me too. Then I'm almost done with my sewing room. So I had found the way I found floss tube was kind of because I found, I was watching sewing room tours or studio tours. So I could really get encouraged. I wanted my sewing room organized and a beautiful place. And so I happened across Lori Holtz and I've shared about this before. I watched her sewing room or studio. I'm not sure what she called it now, studio tour. And I watched it over and over and over. And I've, I've gotten ideas from that, but hers was very large. Mine is not, but you can always, if you get inspired, you can always get something, something worth um, checking out. And Part of what really inspired me about her studio is it was large enough that she had a sitting area in there and she had like, it was almost like a front room. She had a TV and a couch and end table thing. And I have my couch in here too. It's just a futon. It's just shorter, but it is my couch. It is my sitting area. It's my coffee space too. So from that idea, after I watched hers, I thought, yes, I want it like a den like a place that people would want to come in and just sit, even if they weren't stitching or sewing or interested in looking at stitching. So that, that attracted me and I wanted it ultra organized because I wanted stuff in here. So it had gotten quite messy in here because I had pulled my three big boxes of wool out of my office to put in here. And then I've got messy again and I've, I've not been using my wool because it's been and a hard to get to place. So I just kept playing around in here and under this quilt table that always has one, it, it is a neat narrow table that can get all the way closed, but it has two big tabletop things, leaves that open up and then you can prop them up to stay. One is like permanently propped up to stay. And so underneath that, I can get a lot of stuff. I showed on my last floss tube video, the embroidery one, a little stool that I have on one side. I will share some more stuff. I got to figure out how to show you like, anyway, how to show you what I got going on. Cause I really like it. But under like right under where you guys are is my three boxes of wool. And it was perfect space that I can pull them out, get into them, search for one color, put them back no big deal because I've got space. I love that. Before I had a bunch of stuff there and it was just kind of a mess. Then the other thing I found, I think it's Karen Brown, um, just quilted or just get it done. I will link it. Just get it done. I think it was quilts. She had a series on organizing your sewing room. I got really inspired because she showed a ironing board that she made with a cart, a rolling cart. And I was going to do that until I kind of took measurements and I realized that's not going to work. But from that concept, I ordered a five tier cart, rolling cart that fit in my closet where I can even shut that. I can pull that quilt shut and I now have every, well, not now, stuff's on the floor. I don't have anything on the floor when I have everything put away because she had this great idea, even so much that I need to get a plastic tray. She had like a, a little tray or a cookie sheet thing that if you have 
everything for a place for it to go, chances are you're going to have a cleaner, organized place. And I really, sh it, it's amazing. I have a playlist. So on my channel, I have playlists. And so I have one on all the project bags. The very first one is the way I learned how to make the project bags. I just changed the sizes, but those are in some of my other show notes. Um, but I also now have sewing room, studio tour, organizing thing. I just started and really it's probably just Karen's right now there because I haven't spent a lot of time doing that. But I will eventually put Lori Holt's um, video there too. But I loved how she had you break, up, break down in one of her videos, you broke down your tools based on what you would use every day not so often. It was amazing and it, it took a logical thing and it really helped me rethink stuff. So I'll share more about it another time because I really would like to show you the areas of my room somehow with what I've used those concepts and put into play and how it's working for me. And now once I get everything cleaned up after I've, I've just tossed everything on the floor, I like it. It's amazing and um, and it's pleasing to me and I'm, I'm, I'm doing things where I'm trying to see something that I already have that I can reuse in a different way that's using it even better and I've been doing that and I, that's where I can't wait to show it to you somehow and I'll figure that out. But now this is the good stuff. So this is my faith, my faith journaling I kind of call it. And um, I'm not even going to look at my notes as to what I may not have shared with you. But um, Lori from Stitching in the Valley had made me a gratitude journal. And I had shared that on another video. But this is just one of the little, I call them add-ons or accoutrements. Is that the word? It's just, it is just like so cool. And so I've been writing down some of the verses and some of the things that people have commented and said about me because the nice things. Um, I get very, very few um, negative comments, which amazes me. But I think as I share my faith more and share some more things, I'll probably get some negative ones and well, whatever. Um, but the, the, the good, it's not whatever. It does hurt, but um, I'm not going to let it stop me. So um, I just will write down things and, and it just, it's just beautiful. Um, so in that, then I will, like, if someone has a verse there, sometimes I'll go and I'll write that verse down and then I'll read the whole chapter. So I really love it. And it's just a fun, just, it's just cool, cool just to look at too. But I was also texting with a friend of mine and she was just sharing a hurt that she had. And, and so we were just kind of talking back and forth about, about how we could deal with it and keep moving forward in, in Christ's help. And so I had sent her, this was, because I had just, so just before she had texted me, probably about an hour before that, there was just something that was bothering me and hurting me, not anything to do with um, videos. Um, there was just something in my life that was um, hurting me. And I just had to come to terms with it and realize there there is pain in life. There's no way around it. And what are we going to do with it? So, um so this was, I sent this picture to her. Um, so this is the back of my neat, oops, there goes that, depression and anxiety, prayers and promises for depression and anxiety. So because you're not going to be able to see it, it says, when doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer, Psalm um, 94, 19. So I loved that. And then something else, so this was the devotion that I had pulled out because I was really, I was, I had to think. Do, do I trust God? Do I really trust God? That's why my verse, my words for the year, Christy knew, trust and obey. Sometimes it comes down to it and it's like, do I really, really, really trust God in this? And um, so this is what I wanted to share. Um, this is the talking part of the devotional. It says, God, my God, I have nothing if I don't have you. There is so much confusion in this world, so much in my life. When I don't understand what's going on and how to navigate it, I will trust you. I trust you to keep leading me on even when the path is dark and I don't know where I'm headed. I say like David that my whole life is in your hands. I am yours and I trust that you will take care of me every step of the way. 
And then the question is, how do you know that God is trustworthy? Oh, they're not glaring. Oh, they are. So I was, I've was i been thinking about that. And I have shared in other places and probably here that I know God is real because of experiences that I've had in my life. I know that he is trustworthy because of experiences that I've had in my life. What have those experiences been? They've always been hard times. They've always been, you know, the cruddy times in life when that's when it's like I stop, I get on my knees, and it's like, God, I need help. He knows this about us. So because of those, oh, no, times, and he has helped me out of those, and they've usually not been the easiest way out, but they are the best way out. That's how I know he is trustworthy. That's how I know he is real because of experiences that I've had in my life. And, um, and, and I know there's verses in here, but the things that have been really helping me are things. I did a lot of Bible memory when I was a little girl. Then I did a lot of Bible memory with my kids when they were growing up. So when I'm out and about, things will just pop through my mind. And those are the things that really keep me going because it's those little nuggets, not even where I can stop and maybe pick up the Bible and read something. It's like, that's why he says, have your word in. I've hidden my word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we got to hide his word in our heart because we do not know. We do not know when God's word will be taken out of our hands. The way things are going right now, policies that have been put in place in the last couple of weeks here in the United States are not going in good ways for those of us that trust the Lord. Things are going to get hard. And that's part of, I shared in the last, in the other floss tube that I just did, um, I really shared my heart a lot in that. Things that have been upsetting me and worrying me. And um, the whole cancel culture that's going on, that that we will pay, there, there are some of us that will pay heavy prices for what we believe, who we supported in elections. Um, it is truly unbelievable. What's going on right now is not my America. This is not the America that I grew up in. This is stuff that happened in other countries that's now happening in our country. And really just within the last couple of weeks. And I knew it was, I had an idea it was coming. And um, that's, that's where I've been pretty upset. So that's where I have to think. I got to trust in God. Yes. He will carry me through. If people are losing their jobs because of what they believe is right. And they are, um, they are losing things. And the cost of living will increase and if we stay on the trajectory where we are at the moment and I will trust in God I will trust in God that he will put me where he wants me wherever that may be we just heard last night of a pastor in Canada who is in jail now awaiting a sentencing so and that's in other countries so different things are happening all over the place and I was telling my husband jail would not be a happy place for me but if God is with me I can do it. So these are all just like real, real scary things going on. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. We don't know. But I do know God holds me in his hands. I am the apple of his eye and he has good thoughts towards me because I am saved by grace because I believe that he loved me so much. He had his son come to pay the price for my sins that if I believe in Jesus Christ, that he died and rose again and conquered death. And I put my trust in him to save me and get me to heaven. There is no work on earth that I could do that would earn me the right to go to heaven. It is simply because I trust in my Jesus. And it is by his grace and the blood that he shared willingly. He was not killed. He gave his life as a ransom for me and for you. That reminds me, this shirt that I'm wearing, a friend of mine gave it to me. Um, it's N-O-T-W, not of this world. And there's a verse that says, we are not of this world. We are passing through. We are not of this world. We have another world that is our home. So if it comes that we even lay down our faith, 
You know, we de lay down our, it scares me. Even if it comes to that we lay our life down for our faith, I will trust in my Father that He will give me the courage to walk where He wants me to walk. And I know that my mom is waiting for me in heaven. And that is where I would go if I died. So that's just what I want to um, share with you. That's where I am. That's what's been going on in my life. Sometimes because I am so concerned about what's going on in, in our states here, um, I have been in what I call a hide and stitch mode. And basically it's like I hide out in my happy spot and I stitch. And it's just part of how I've learned how to handle life. Um, I don't drink. I stitch. Um, I drink coffee. But it's just part of what I do. And um, that's where I have been. That's what I've been up to. And I thank you so much because I know there are tons of people that stay with me to the end because they want to hear about their Jesus too. So um, thank you for sharing in this with me. Thank you again for all the words of encouragement that you guys share. I know a lot of people are praying for me and I tell you I need it. Um, thank you for you, you sweet ladies who have sent me these amazing gifts. Um, and it just means a lot to me. The friendships here, and I know Celeste has said it, that that the biggest thing that she gets is the friendships in this. And, and I treasure it. And I thank you so much for that. And I just pray that you will trust in the Lord, obey him, and that you will choose joy nevertheless. Thank you so much.